Hi guys, thanks for joining me for this video. I'm very fortunate uh, today we're going to be having another interview, uh, something I'm really excited about. I've, uh, I'm going to have Steve Brown with us today and uh, I've known Steve, what, a couple of months now I suppose we worked together originally because we're both on Team Boeing's as in you know both do some of the demos on you know live on the live stages and that sort of thing as well. Um, and you know, I've seen his work on online. He was showing me the demos and that sort of thing. And I was like, you know, it was a really great opportunity to actually see how you know some of the mindset b between some of the works he does, how he goes about it, and why he does it. And because it's something completely different to me, I don't do anything like the sort of work that he does. So, great opportunity. So, thank you for this, Steve. You want to just give us just a quick, you know, elevator pitch of uh, you know who you are and what you do. That sort of sure. Thing. Um, I'm Steve Brown. I'm a commercial photographer based in London. And the majority of my work is probably TV, marketing, and publicity campaigns. Okay, okay. And I suppose to break it down even further, you know, pretty much everything that you shoot is a portrait in one form or another. It's like people in it. Yeah, I, I, I essentially shoot people, and sometimes those people are in locations and landscapes, sometimes okay. they're in a studio, but the person is generally Normally the focus of the shot. Yes, yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. And if I shot a landscape, I would think, oh, it's all right, but it's missing a person. I wish there was a person in there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, and, you know, looking at your website, and I'll pop the link in the bio and that sort of thing, um, but you're looking at your website and just straight away you can see that your work is you know, incredibly polished, very sort of refined, but also, you know, I'm looking at the, at the shots and, you know, some of them do look like they've been, is it the composites? Do you do yes. a lot of composites? Yeah. Yes, I shoot a lot of composites. I started off I, I started off shooting uh, music photography uh, for magazines okay. and I always wanted to do something really cinematic and uh, you know spectacular but the budgets generally weren't there to actually do that I know. so uh, yeah, 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 yeah you know yeah. Uh, very much not so and so I would shoot the band in the studio and then go out and photograph skies and landscapes and uh, different elements of backgrounds and post them all together again, again so that I could create a much more cinematic film poster looking image gotcha. that I wouldn't just have the, the resources to be able to do on the day of budget. On the day of budget. So really that style has come from uh, almost restraints to a certain mm. extent. It's like, yeah. well, how can I, you know, these this is the tools that I've been given, this is the time that I've been given, this is the budget I've been given, how can I make the absolute mm. best of it? I want to do something that looks like a, a £10,000 project, <laughs> but I've got £500 yeah, exactly, to yeah. do it with. Yeah, uh, yeah absolutely. One um, of the big misconceptions about yeah. the music industry. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, with the TV industry, um, you might have 20 different actors from a show that you need to photograph in a day. And they're all available at different times because they're shooting scenes for the actual show. And so you okay. might, they might say, this person's available for five minutes at three o'clock, and this person's available for two and a half minutes at four o'clock, and you can get this person at some point between right. five and six. And, I got you. You know, and and you gradually collect all your pieces, and then uh, at the end you bring them all together. And you may you... have a, a you know a few minutes at lunchtime to shoot the set, or you may go off and shoot a, a landscape somewhere else. Okay, I, I've been, I, I know the images that you're referring to. There's some images on your website where there's a group of, I don't know, like 10 people or something like that, and they're maybe sat around in, in an environment. And I have to say that it didn't immediately jump out at me as that they were all composites, but those people are all shot at different times then throughout the day? Yes, yes. Um, most of the TV stuff that I've done, the people would all be shot separately from each other, and then quite often separately from the, uh, from the background. There's a shot of three guys sitting in a pub and each guy is separately shot, the table is separately shot, all the drinks okay. on the table are separately shot, and then the background characters and the pub are shot separately as well. So every okay. different element okay. is okay. you know, put put together afterwards. Here's one thing I wanted to ask about the group shots then with composite. I mean, I've never done it myself, so I don't know, but I, it would have seemed that you've got a scene and you've got the, okay, I know that I can fit like 10 or 15 people in here, cool, okay. Right, so when Sally gets here, I'll put her over there, and when John gets here, I'll put him over there. Is that how you do it, or you just like then you have to just overlay them, or do you shoot them all dead straight on? And... I tend to shoot everyone just in the center of the frame because you don't necessarily. Sometimes you know where you're going to put the various people, and you know if you're lucky, you can sit and do a sketch and everything. Oh, true, but sometimes you might not be the one doing the retouching. Sometimes you might be doing a version, but then also the all the assets are getting sent off somewhere to do an international version or a, you know something for the future that they may or may not want to do. They may want to do a three shot, a five shot, a 10 shot, a 20 shot okay. and singles, and you've only got two minutes with each person. So you can't be 
setting up different lighting for every individual person gotcha. and you know and shooting everybody very very specifically because then if they change their mind about oh actually it would look better if this person was over here or there's a, the relationship between these two yeah, characters sure is expressed by who's going to be way. the hero of that particular yeah, yeah. season or whatever yeah, okay, exactly. gotcha. or if two magazines want different versions and they want to move the characters around or whatever okay. then um, you need to have that flexibility so I tend to shoot people in a very standardised way so that at least they're all being affected by essentially the same gotcha. lighting okay. and the light direction and stuff. And then when you're doing that, then you're, like you say, you're, you're so you're photographing the wall in front of you, and I presume it's not just, they've got, what, have you got like set poses that you take them in? That sort of yes. Thing, or... I mean, sometimes if you're doing a lot of characters and you've got a couple of people who need shots for different purposes, whispering in your ear saying, make sure we get this, make sure we get that, it can be almost like a production line. You know, you have 20 characters and for mm. each person you have to do a close-up, half length, full length, and within each of those you have to do yes. facing to the left, facing to the right, facing straight eyes on, looking over your shoulder, eyes to camera, eyes off camera, with the sword, without the sword, wearing the hat with the coat, but and then also with the coat but without the hat, and you know, they might have 40 different variations per, per, per actor, person. and okay. then 20 people, and so wow. you can come back from a day of shooting and have, you know, 3,000 images that you've shot in the day. All for um, essentially what you could be one of these yeah. Again, but yeah, yeah, exactly. And they might only use four of those images, or they may do 12, oh, kill 12 him different off. campaigns. He's not going to be in it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so, yeah, you, you never quite know. They don't know what they're going to need, so they say, well, it's best to just have everything. If There's a, a kind of cliche, whereas if, if you ask, ever ask the art director, would you like this or this, they say, can we just get both? both. Because yeah. then at least we've got them, and we can never ask that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, if, if that's the way you're shooting, you're trying to, like, you know, you're covering your bases, you're trying to shoot as many different variations as possible to so you've got it in the bag if and when they ever need it and that sort of thing. What are your settings then if you're trying to keep it standardised? If you've got 20 people, I presume you can't have them all at different settings. Yeah, I try and shoot, I'll set up a, a tripod height, so the camera and, and distance, so I'm always shooting people from the same angle, distance and So they're in a seat height. box or something like that? Yeah, or just standing, okay. standing there. Um, and then I'll shoot on fairly standard lens, you know, 50mm lens, something like that, so mm -hmm. that it's minimal distortion. Yeah. And then shoot at, say, f8, so that I have enough depth of field that they are all in focus. Every True. part of them is in focus. True. Because if you have different depths of field coming in There's and out through the... Depth of field on her at the front, yeah, he's in yeah, focus. Yeah, exactly. Like, what's going on there? That doesn't work at all. Okay. Um, and, yeah, as, soon as, as long as you do that. And then also, if you know roughly what height your camera is in relation to the people. If it's roughly chest height, then when you line them up, if you, if you make someone smaller at the back, if you have their two chests level to each other, okay. it will look right, because that's the plane of where the camera is actually seeing. Oh, so as long as you've got that and you know... So if you kind of have that in your head as to where where it was, whether it was at you know, waist see. height or chest height or whatever, see. then even really if you're changing people's scales, you can keep them sort of correct. If you have that in mind, yeah. that automatically keeps perspective. Yeah, yeah. Right there, like it. To pro <laughs> <laughs> Um I, I, And I presume, like you're saying, you've got. Uh, I suppose it came up when we were chatting before. We said about you know some, some of your shots, you know, stunning, gorgeous. You know, and, and some people might think, well, <laughs> that I could be saying that. I could, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, really refined. And some people might think, well, you know, I could, I could perhaps do that. And you know, you're looking at a shot like that, and you think, oh, it's you know, okay, maybe it's three or four lights, and you've got to set that up and that sort of thing. Um, you know, and like to me, I know that actors sometimes you don't have as or anybody famous or anything like that. Really, you sometimes don't have as much time as perhaps as you'd like. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the big secret, not really secret, but uh, you know, secret of, of professional photography is that it's often not really about how difficult the actual photography is and how complicated the lighting is and what clever tricks or amazing equipment you've used. It's the fact that you can still produce a good result, even if you only had a minute with somebody Under and they were in a bad mood and there were 30 people stood around behind you, you know, puffing and like, I've had people stand behind me counting down the time that I have left. Really? Um, wow. Or, or times when That's I... really nice. Yeah, it's fantastic. It really helps you be creative oh, yeah, and relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I really want to capture yeah. the real you. Yeah. The shortest shoot I ever had with an actor was 45 seconds. Really, um, five seconds. and two or three minutes isn't unusual. Sometimes yeah. you get five, ten, fifteen, twenty minutes, but um, yeah. that would be luxurious. 
So how do you <laughs> how do you prepare yourself for that then? Do you have like stand-ins or what are you doing? Right? Yeah, so I generally have an assistant um, and probably a uh, an art director on the shoot, and I will get them to stand in. You know, maybe get both of them to stand in and and you know see how the light affects two people at once and things like that. Um, and I'll I always prefer to have more time to set up and prepare and less time to shoot within reason. Um, rather than be, uh, you know, rushed in the setting up and and then have ages to shoot, but the, the what I'm shooting isn't good because the lighting isn't right. Yeah, good. well, you're not concentrating on them; you're concentrating on the setup and yeah. those sort of things. Well, yes. Yeah, so and if I'm setting up well. while they're standing there, it's wasting their it, time. It really does when they yeah. turn up, I need to be totally on it and Just say, okay, in, stand but... there, look to the left, look to the right, you know, look up, look around, you know, um, when they come in closer, go further away, and if I can shoot and be done faster than they expect and more efficiently than they think with less flapping around, then they're going to go away happy and say nice things about me. Whereas if they, you know, if I, if they think it's going to take 15 minutes and I do it in 12 minutes, mm. everyone will be delighted. Whereas if they think it's 15 minutes and it takes 20 minutes, everyone will be furious. Yeah, and those last five minutes as well are wasted because everybody's like, are you done yet? Are you done yet? Are you yeah. done yet? Yeah. Counting so, down behind yeah. me. <laughs> um, Obviously, you won't mention any names, but I know that you mentioned to me before you you had a, a, a situation where you were waiting all day, for, mm. literally for somebody. You see, it's quite you know somebody quite famous yeah. at the time, and um, you, you know you were waiting all day for them, and like they came in and yes, yeah, so you'd be you know it's not unusual. You wait for hours. I've, I've waited on TV sets for literally six hours from the time we turned up to the time when you start shooting, but you don't tend to know when that time is going to be. So you suddenly they'll just arrive or you'll get a call saying they're coming up the stairs and you've got to be suddenly on it the adrenaline starts flowing and and, uh, and then yeah and then you might have a couple of minutes with this particular person they walked in and they had you know stylists and makeup artists and personal assistants and managers and people from the tv channel and people from their Watch you know come management in, and yeah it's literally 25 people piled into the room with 30 seconds notice and they were like right you've got two and a half minutes and then he has to leave no pressure and, everybody uh, watching it. Um, <laughs> and by the way he's a global megastar don't piss him off <laughs> jeez okay so yeah it's got to be I, I can't even imagine that really but I suppose that's that's you know that's what we're talking about that really separates somebody who does it professionally like you you can like you're gonna pretty much I'm guaranteeing you results yeah, here, but yeah I think it's that's not a case of just doing my best that's where your 10,000 hours comes in you know you've done it so many times that the, the actual photography is fairly automatic yeah. you don't need to think about whether that's working it's then it becomes about directing the connection with the person because yeah. at the end of the day you've got to get a great shot from somebody that, you, that you're going to interact with for two minutes yeah yeah. I mean, yeah it's cause not like you're building up a rapport and that sort of thing the yeah. dream would be that you you know you spend ages with them and talk about things and build up a rapport and find out a little bit about them and try and express their personality through the shots but they pile in with 25 people and you've got two minutes that, yeah, yeah, that yeah, goes yeah. out the window yeah, so, so yeah, you have right, to just right, what, what, what's, yeah. what's my name? <laughs> <laughs> you basically have to just be pleasant and friendly and then say okay this is what we're going to do and lay out what you're trying to achieve in the next two and a half minutes sure. as clearly sure. and quickly as possible so that they know what's happening and they're not just like where, where do I stand yeah okay, um, sure. and then you, once you've explained it you then just rattle through it quickly okay. and efficiently okay. and then uh, hopefully they'll go away happy and with your shots like seven four the composite so you know we've spoken about getting like the you know the, the pictures of them but with, with regards to actually getting the backgrounds like how do you use stock imagery? Do you shoot everything yourself? Do, does a client buy it? What's the deal normally? I try as much as possible to shoot everything myself. Um, sometimes you might be working with existing stuff or even CGI environments. Um, okay. But uh, the majority of stuff that I've done, I tend to shoot all the elements and then I know that they all fit together. Gotcha. That's what I was going to ask. Like, you know, it's all very well doing like setting up a lighting and that sort of thing, but uh, I mean, I presume you would always have the, the background first. Is, uh, how do you set up the lighting? Then? Um, as much as possible. Yeah. I mean, one of the problems with doing things in this way is that every as soon as you take the first picture, you're locking yourself into a 
a certain number of decisions. True. So you shoot your first background. Don't touch that tripod. And then, yeah, the tripod height is fixed. Yeah, yeah. And then if you get to suit in the person and you think, oh, I wish they, they'd really look better from six <laughs> inches higher. Yeah. It's so, tough. That true, won't fit yeah. in with the, the angle of the true. ground. Yeah, yeah. Um, or, you know, the light, the sunlight's coming from a certain angle or, you yeah. know, whatever. And then you just, you have to, to match that. So gotcha. it can, it has its own frustrations and its own difficulties but it also allows you to do things that you just wouldn't practically be able to do otherwise True, yeah, because exactly, people yeah. aren't available and you know you don't have the time and the resources and the you know, for the sun it's, it's all right just wait there yes just two, yeah, just two more minutes <laughs> yeah. the sun, yeah, don't yeah. worry these the 25 actors that will <laughs> two hours the sun will be perfect, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the other thing as well it's just the fact that i suppose composites was you know one of those ways of getting around that waiting for yeah. the right light and yeah. Sort of thing. yeah yeah do you enjoy shooting your own composites or your own backgrounds i mean or is it not something you like Ooh. yes yeah i mean some sometimes it's nicer than others you know sometimes it's really nice to get up at 5 a.m and go out and the sun's just rising and everything looks amazing i'll take your word for it mate <laughs> <laughs> Other times it's raining and miserable and it's, the place looks boring and right, okay. you know you've been told that you have to shoot this. You know I had a did one TV show where I had to shoot overlooking a town, and it just it was a boring town and it didn't okay. look interesting and you couldn't yeah. you kind of can't look down on it and have an interesting view of a lot of people and it just didn't the the brief wasn't wasn't, wasn't interesting yeah, okay, and so gotcha. sometimes it's hard to do anything do what you've been asked to do and make it as good as you would like it gotcha. but um, you know that again that's the, the thing of being a pro is that you're not always taking your favourite dream image sometimes no it's true you're trying mean, to make somebody else's brief, vision as exactly. good as possible yeah, that's, that's what's part about being, doing what we do is that you, you get given a brief and it's mm. not just like well that's a guide yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no that's the brief yeah. 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 I decided to go in a different direction I took your brief felt, as inspiration yeah. Yeah. and I decided <laughs> They're like, yeah, but we, we did this sketch and that doesn't look like a sketch. <laughs> so we were chatting just before we put the cameras on about personal projects and I understand that you've been away for a, for a while doing one of those. Like, how, yes. like, personal projects, how important are they to you and why do you do them? I think they're probably the most crucial part of my whole business, really. Wow. Um, I mean, obviously, you have to get paid, and that yeah. helps. Yeah. But in terms of getting better as a photographer, um, and kind of defining the path that your career is going to take, personal work is is the thing that you have to do because otherwise, all you're doing is the work that comes in, and people are only going to give you jobs based on what you already have done. So basically, so, you've taken images already that you've been paid for, and they're on your yeah. website, and that's. All people are ever going to yes. ask you to do. So that. they're going to say, okay, he does group pictures of actors for TV shows, mainly detective dramas for ITV. In a warehouse. That's all they're ever going to give him. In yeah, a whole exactly. Somewhere. Yeah. And he's the man for the job. Yeah, exactly. And so if you want to get more location work or more work with models or you want to do period dramas or whatever it is, the only way to do that on the whole is to go out and do it yourself and then say to people, hey, look, I can do this too. I can do And they it. go, oh, that's good. Let's give you loads of money to do it. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, okay. So, yeah, so that's this, value for me. This, yeah, which, I mean, obviously you're putting a very high value on it, which is interesting, yeah, because I think a lot, a lot of people say, oh, well, personal projects are nice, but I don't do them anymore because I'm full-time now. And uh, yeah, I get it, it takes time and, it, you know, obviously it takes money and that sort of thing. But which which is the one that you've just done recently? There's a big one you've just done recently. So I got back a few weeks ago from Nepal where I ended up being there for just under six weeks. Um, I was planning to be there for four and a half weeks, but then I actually got... A, job, paying job, okay. which okay. neatly dovetailed into the end of it, okay. um, which was great. You know? But originally though, this was all just like, right, this is what I want to go to, I want to take some pictures yeah. of Paul, this is totally my idea, nobody's asked me to do it, yeah. and why did you want to do that? Or why? So initially, I was doing loads of this, um, with this TV marketing and publicity stuff, shooting okay. a lot of actors in studios, and I started feeling a bit like I'm just in studios all the time. No offence. Nothing wrong with that. It's <laughs> perfectly respectable. Yeah. <laughs> it's warm. Yeah. It's like, what kind of idiot would want to be in a studio all the time? Um, and I was just starting to get a little bit bored with doing the same thing all the time. And so I thought, how can I get work going out into the world to amazing places and having adventures? And okay. as we were just saying, the way to get 
work is to do that work yourself and uh, and then show it to people. And so I thought, you know, I should probably go big or go home. So what's the most spectacular thing I can think of as a, as a place to go? You know, yeah, I could go and shoot in a field in Sussex or something. Well, and but... you could probably get somebody to take a backdrop for you, mate. Yes. Get a mountain backdrop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I could, yeah, it'd be just like somewhere warm to go and have a coffee yeah. and stuff. Uh, but yes, yeah, so I thought, well, I want to go to Everest because... Go big or go just, home. Yeah, go big or go home. And it's like, I, <laughs> I kind of feel like that's one of the most, you know, amazing places oh, in the world. Yeah, I'm super jealous. So, um, yeah. yeah, so I got in touch with a guy who was leading an expedition of people who were going to climb Everest and uh, in return for providing him with a bunch of pictures of the trip, um, he did me a bit of a deal on the sort of tagging along uh, with them so we spent three weeks trekking through the mountains and ended up at Everest Base Camp and then I stayed there for a week mm. taking pictures and uh, and then came back and then went straight into the BBC job which was uh, filming in Nepal. Gotcha, okay, so let me just recap here a second. So the, the, the idea originally was, okay, I want to do a personal project, I want to do it in Nepal so I can hopefully get more you know, more work in the future, be sent around the world and this is my proof that I can do yeah. it. This is the evidence that's going in my portfolio. This is what it will look like if you pay me to go out somewhere amazing exactly, and yeah, take pictures exactly. of Now, people. obviously the first you know point there is like, well, that's, you know, personal projects cost you money. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, but, so, but you said there that you managed to get, so you got some discount of <laughs> Steve's cat. <laughs> um, we managed to get some discount from uh, the guy who was doing the leading the trek and that yeah. sort of thing. So you're going to yeah. give him some images. Yeah. Okay. How else did you manage to subsidize this trip? Then? So I also spoke to Bowens, as we're both yeah, yeah. part of Team Bowens, and said that I could provide them with some pictures showcasing their location lights, the XMT lights. In you know being used in spectacular locations again, it's all very well saying, "Hey, look, you can use this in a field, you know, just outside the M25." But it's a little bit more <laughs> exciting showing them being used yeah, yeah. on a glacier or on the top of a mountain yeah, top, you know, a thousand miles from the nearest yeah. charging socket. Um, and True. so I said to them, you know, how about I provide you with some marketing materials and and you can you know give me a little bit of money towards my trip. And so. That you know worked out really well. As and granted, well. we you know we obviously we you know we're part of team and that sort of thing. So granted, you, you had you had those contacts and those inroads. But you know, put it you know you put yourself in a situation where you're that business and somebody's coming to you and they and they're calling you up or sending you email going, look, I've done all the work for you, I've yeah. got everything in place. Yeah, you can already see that I know what I'm doing. Yeah, you, this don't, is, you don't have to pay to send me to this place. Exactly. I'm going yeah, there anyway. Sort of, I'm going there anyway. Yeah. But can you you know like sort me out A B C and D? I yeah. mean, like. I, a lot of the times, people will be crazy not to, mm, not to yeah, yeah, you know, I think get, so. get involved yeah. in that, especially if they can see that oh, this guy obviously knows what he's doing, mm. and it's worth it, um, and we're going to get something out of it. We didn't have to organize it. We just got to sit back and you know, get some images in yeah. there, which is great. Um, so yeah, so obviously you're getting a discount from the guy. You're going to get, you know, obviously you've got some uh, money from companies like Bowens and that sort yeah. of thing. Um, and then afterwards, what are you going to do with each other after that? You know, um, so the main... Um, the main thing I'm going to actually be using the pictures for is, like I said, to show them sure. to existing clients who might have, you know, be, have been using me for more studio-based stuff. But I'm saying, say, hey, look, you know, this is what I could do if you, you know, send me out on location. Could you sell any of those images? Um, I possibly could. Oh, um, I could do. <laughs> I mean, I, yes, yeah, so I am doing. I, I, I'm putting some into a just a small, uh, you know, self. Uh, sure. Yeah. What's it called? on-demand publishing um, mm -hmm. books. It's not, you know, nothing major, but some of the people who may, who have been on the trip and, you know, some of them may be interested in buying a couple of copies of a book right. for their, for their so, memories, you know. It's, 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 all these are ways that we, you know, it's not a case, our personal projects cost money, can't be done, yeah. you know, so it's not yeah, for yeah. me, that sort of thing. I sort of saying all these ways are, you, you yeah. know, us making, you know, yeah. actually making these projects worth for us. And on top of that, not only did you get all those, you know, ways of helping you with the money, but you also, as you were out there, as luck would have it, somebody found out mm. that you were out there and what well, they asked you to stay home. The power of out of office email replies. I had a thing on my email oh, saying, you yeah, know, I, I'm, I'm in Nepal, you know, so uh, my, my email uh, might be a bit sporadic. And someone from a TV company said, oh, that's interesting. We're doing a show in Nepal. And, and again, you know, he's already out there. We don't have to send him out there. We don't have to pay for airfares. Um, he's got all his gear with him. 
he could do a few days on set for us and get some nice portraits of the actors and stuff. And so, uh, and I, you know, the actors were going to be on location. So I said, well, interestingly enough, here's a few pictures I've just been doing of people on location in mountainous regions. Crazy, man. You know, and they were like, yep, exactly that. That's what we need. Perfect. Okay. Um, so yeah, so I, that, that worked really well. They, it just so happened that the timing worked really well. So would you and, say it's uh, just total luck that you got that in a pool job then? It's, it's luck that I made by exactly. putting myself in the place where good luck could happen. Absolutely. You know, the more you're out doing cool things and talking to people and, you know, just being... You the more know, chances you've got yeah, to land exactly. something. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You're only going to be in the right place at the right time if you're in the <laughs> right place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? You've got to at least get yeah. halfway there. Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. yeah. I was, if I was sat at home waiting for the phone to ring, that wouldn't have happened. Um, and so, yeah, it was, it was, it was great good luck, but it was also... It, it only happened because because sure, you know, yeah. I put that effort into you know making a project happen, awesome. um, and it's you know yes it cost me thousands of pounds to go out there, but it's not a cost it's an investment. Oh, you know, yeah, that's, that, good, that's that good way money yeah, yeah. will come back in future projects. Better. Oh work, yeah, you're really only you have to get you know one two jobs off yeah. that, and it's already paid for itself. Yeah. You know, so. I did a previous shoot um, last year in Finland shooting um, ice fishermen on mm -hmm. a frozen lake mm -hmm. and literally three or four weeks later um, I was talking to some people at BBC Worldwide and they were doing a show in the Arctic and uh, and I okay. said uh, well that's interesting I've just been doing a shot in the snow and sent them the pictures and they're like yeah that's pretty much exactly what we want um, so those Arctic shots they're, they're not they're not comps then uh, they were they did a lot of work on them, okay. uh, but they were actually genuinely shot in the Arctic okay. originally. But then they kind of they fiddled around in the background and okay. stuff. But yeah, they were shot for real. Okay, cool. And then and again, like you got that job because you done yeah. that. Yeah, yes. Yeah. And it was the timing was good, but um, but that 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 those having those pictures meant that the my contact could take them to the people higher up and say, look, this is why you should sign off on this guy being the photographer that, that does this job. I find it highly unlikely they would have signed off had you not had those images for sure. It's just yeah. no way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. It's just, you know, when you're dealing with budgets like and times like that, it's just, yeah. you're not going to take risks. Really. Yeah, just exactly. not going to. Yeah. Really. Um, so you put together that big project out in the pool again, and like, I just want to talk a little bit nerdy about logistics here. Yeah. I mean, you, you knew what you wanted to do when you were out there in terms of the shots, and you wanted to get some portraits and that sort of thing. So what kit did you actually take to, you know, to get this done? So I had, one of the things I was thinking about when I was packing my gear and deciding what to take was basically a toss-up between weight and uh, and um, redundancy, a double redundancy. So gotcha. I wanted to make sure that, you know, I'm thousands of miles from the nearest camera shop. If my card reader stops working, suddenly that means I'm limited in the number of more shots I can take because mm -hmm. I can't download mm -hmm. anything. So take two card readers. So I took two cameras, two card readers, loads of cards, loads of batteries, uh, a couple of hard drives, laptop. Um, I had my two cameras on a cotton carrier harness, which meant that I could walk for seven hours a day oh, up the really mountains good. and stuff. It's, uh, um, and that was, yeah, that was brilliant. It puts all the weight on your shoulders rather than on around your neck. And that gotcha. was, uh, okay. it was Do you want invaluable. You attach the... Yeah, you have a little socket and, uh, you put the camera in sideways and then turn it and it locks when it's oh, really? facing down so it can't pop out again. Okay. So, okay. Um, and uh, so yeah, that was really good. And then I had... <laughs> now this is this is a true test Hello, of the broadcast. Yeah, I was, I was just going to keep it cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, I had two uh, XMT lights. Uh, These are the Boeing ones. Yeah, the Boeing ones in the rucksack that they come in. Now, just, just to clarify, with yeah. XMT, this is, you know, I know we are, you know, part of the Bowens team and that sort of thing, but we ought to at least clarify what they are. These are the battery power yes. locations. Yes, there is right. not very many plug sockets up mountains, <laughs> <laughs> 5,000 metres in Nepal. Uh, yeah, so yeah, absolutely, yeah. I, it, it gave me the ability to essentially shoot studio lighting mm -hmm. on a mountain top, miles from anywhere, um, which was great. You know, it's exactly what I wanted to do. Um, okay. And I had them on tripods rather than lighting stands because there's no flat ground anywhere and so lighting oh, stands I see with are tripods, not you can particularly useful. Adjust the legs independently. Adjust legs, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so gotcha. you can have it on a 45 degree slope and still have the actual central bit gotcha. vertical. Gotcha. Which was again really, really useful. But you had to develop a piece of 
can yes. actually do that because you're yes. them wrong. But top, the of a, top, top of a tripod is a male screw thread, and the spigot of a lighting stand is a male screw thread. So yeah. I had to make a little device that I could screw both things into to join okay. join them together, which see. meant that I could then mount the light on the tripod. Okay. So which again, I had to put that thought in work saying. and yeah. they actually come up with something and you know pay someone to a metal worker to bake it for me and. You know, um, okay. do all that stuff. Okay, uh, and again, this is something that you're having to pre-think as a way. Because you, you have you spent, have you done many expeditions or anything like that in the past? Or? No, um, apart from you know, I went to Finland, um, True. Yeah, yeah. went to the Arctic, but those were very. I mean, they were very small and safe and you know easy in comparison. It was very you know very close to civilization. Okay. Whereas with this, I, I was very aware that we were going to be could be days away from sure, yeah. the nearest. So you're trying town. to like perceive problems. I mean, like the light stand one, I think is a classic one. I think I think I would have been hard pressed to have you know to have realised that before I got out there. Yeah, I think it would have been. Like, yeah, you're gonna have to hold this. Right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you just throw away that light stand. Yeah, you're gonna have to hold it. Yeah, because um, yeah. yeah, I can't imagine I would have pre-thought that one. Um, and another thing that you thought about beforehand was obviously the lights are battery powered. Yeah. And obviously, there's certain issues with batteries in cold conditions. Yes. So again, so from doing a couple of shoots before in cold conditions, I knew that uh, batteries don't like cold, and if you're um, shooting in very cold conditions, and it, it did get very cold sometimes, um, the battery just they just drain. Yeah. In well, back minutes. in back in when I was younger, I used to do a lot of mountaineering. This is back when battery and when cameras and that sort of thing were all the double A's. And that right. Sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I was going mountaineering with duct taped batteries <laughs> to my stomach. Just to keep them warm, because yeah. they just go like yeah. that. So you just yeah. take them out, you get like a, a, a fistful of shots, and that's yeah. it. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah, so I I actually again made some little padded fleecy jackets for my lights that I could wrap around and velcro underneath, nice. and put a little uh, foot warmer pad in uh, over the battery, and that would basically keep the warm little sachets the that you can buy yeah, outdoor yeah, stores. Exactly. Though. Yeah, you put them in your gloves or your socks. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and that meant that there was just that little bit of heat on the battery, and uh, it meant that they weren't uh, just draining. And that actually worked really, really well. But it does. And in, in fairness to Bowen, I mean, they're, they're they're one of the only batteries that I'm aware of where it's actually in the body mm. itself. I know yeah. a lot of battery packs are actually just yeah. mass and yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, exactly. one of the benefits is it being enclosed yeah. in the body helps it makes it all it. a lot easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And they, they, to be fair, they, they worked really well. The lights worked in all the conditions that I. Put them into, you know, which was really impressive. Also, I was really pleased with them. So, when you're using the XMTs and, and you were using them out there, I mean, I, like, like I said, well, I mentioned to you before, I mean, I did some mountaineering stuff when I was younger. I know that the mountains it is so bright. Like, for a start, you're up high, so yeah. the air is really pure, so the light is super powerful. Plus, the fact you're standing on like football fields of just reflectors. Yeah. Um, so there's just so much light out there. Yeah. You know, what's you know, in in terms of when you were setting up your shots, what some of the, some of the things that you were looking to achieve, or some of the problems that you came across, you know, with some sort of portraits that you were taking. Yes, I mean the whole trip, I, I wasn't struggling to get a fast enough shutter speed. It was yeah. you know, very bright, and yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So when I was shooting with flash, um, traditionally with older flashes, you can only shoot up to 125th of a second. And it have it still sync with the camera, which meant that that part of your um, exposure reciprocity is locked. So you have to have a certain aperture to get a good, perfect exposure because your shutter speed is just it is what it is. So what you're saying um, is that the the environment originally was so bright that if you want to do that 125th of a second, yeah. you know, even at ISO yeah. 100. You'd have to have an aperture of like f64 or something yeah, like that because exactly. it just would be yeah, so yeah, bright. Yeah. So you you were trying to how can I get an aperture that I want? Yeah, and and obviously then you have to have a massive wallop of flash to shoot at f22 or f64 gotcha. or whatever as well. To try and I'm um, with you. I'm with you. Yeah, so yeah. the because the XMTs have high speed sync, um, that meant that I could shoot at faster shutter speeds, which meant that I could choose the aperture. Because you've got your aperture and shutter speed, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, that's yeah, linked. Yeah. And uh, so, if I wanted to shoot at a load at the field, I could just shoot at a six thousandth of a second. Um, so that really helped, you know, me. To, it helped me to be creative and shoot the way that I wanted to shoot things, uh, rather than be kind of hidebound by the um, 
you know, just the, the shutter speed that I was dictated to me by the flight. It's a really clever way of, get, of getting around it, because you're absolutely right. When you're out on location, like, you are dictated to by that shutter speed. Yeah. Like, you, you know, the, like, one of the only lights in the scene is, is the one that you can't control, which is mm. the sun. Yeah. So, you, so you, everything has to be based around that. So, you know, and that's quite often the problem when you're out there. It's like, how do I get my lights powerful enough mm. to bring everything up so that I can, you know, match yeah. the sun so it looks like, but you're yeah. not doing that. You're actually yeah. doing it. You're cutting down the power or you're cutting down the shutter speed or you're increasing the shutter speed, which cuts down the ambient light. Yeah. And then the high speed sync of the flash is, is matched to that. Yeah, exactly. And I was still struggling really for, for power yeah. because it was so bright that I can you know, it's just, it's always, um, it's always at the very edge of what the flash can do. Because you always want to, you know, you want to shoot really wide, which means you have to have the flash further away. And that means it's- Oh, otherwise the flash is going to be in the shot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, of course. It makes it less powerful. And, you know, so you're always, you know, trying to push the equipment to its limits. And I was actually really pleased with the, you know the gear and, and what I was able to do with it, um, but when the surroundings that you're working in are so extreme, and you might have this yeah, incredibly bright sunshine and incredibly cold air, and you're on a 45 degree slope of loose rocks and ice, and the wind's blowing, and not forget you know, your altitude and your altitude, so you're yeah. exhausted if you take three steps. Yeah, right. so, <laughs> yeah. so you've got all these things again. It's like you were saying about. Um, shooting under pressure with celebrities yeah, yeah. you're shooting under a different kind of pressure because you have to still be making all these creative decisions but you've got all these different restrictions on what you're doing yeah I mean I suppose you had to be pretty au okay with the lights before you went out there I mean I know when I was at altitude I could barely remember my own name, you know, let alone do a times table or anything like that. I certainly one, wanted to have been like going, how do I access my speed sync on the back of my flash yeah. and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Plus um, you're photographing someone who might, you know, I photographed a lot of the local Sherpas mm -hmm. and stuff and they don't necessarily really want to do a shoot and they, you know, they're, they're, they give kindly allowing you to take pictures. And so just like a celebrity, you don't want to sure. take out a lot of take their time. Their, those of their time. And so, you know, they're not just waiting for you. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. just waiting for the next photographer to come back. Yeah. yeah. I am actually yeah. have got a job yeah. I'm doing my day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Plus true. it might be, you know, minus five degrees and blowing a gale true. and, you know, they've, they've kindly said, yeah, okay, I'll give you a couple of minutes. So, you know, you're just trying to be quick and efficient and get what you need in as short a time as possible. Gotcha. And I see a lot of your shops, you know, you, they, they seem to be set up in a similar way. You've got the line yeah. behind subject and then you're basically almost sandwiching the, like the yes so the I'll be well. um, using the sun as a backlight so basically yeah, and sort of uh, and then you know that means that the all of the uh, landscape is nicely backlit as well and uh, and then you kind of fill in onto them with the flash so that they're not just a silhouette against the, okay. Okay. the, uh, the sky so there really wasn't any other problems that you encountered then. You were trying to do all these different, you know, portraits of everybody in their, you know, homes and environments. And how long would it take you? Like, so you, so you're walking along, obviously doing your track or whatever. You know, tired, you got your stuff in your bag or whatever. And you see somebody, it's like, oh, I see somebody down there outside the hut. Wow, I, I really want to get that shot. Like, you know, just give me a ballpark figure. How long would it take you um, to get the shot and be on your way? I mean, to, to be honest, we it tended to not be quite that spontaneous. So it'd be okay. more that people that we... Just totally you Maybe if we were... Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe <laughs> we were staying somewhere and the person that owned the guest house or somebody that worked with them or a okay. friend of them or whatever, it would be someone that knew someone that we knew. And so I would say, you know, do you think it'd be okay to photograph that person? And then usually that person didn't speak English. So one of the people that was kind of one of our guides or whatever that spoke some English and Nepalese would go and talk to them and explain what they were going to do. See, obviously true, you've got so, that added yeah, problem as well. Language yeah. problem as well, trying to, trying to communicate with them. And so then I would pick somewhere, you know, and I, then when the, once they said yes, the time, the clock's ticking because they'd say yes, but I've only got four or five minutes. So then you pick somewhere that looks good, set up, you know, probably five minutes to set up and, you know, four or five minutes to shoot and then yeah, it's pretty quick, really. it's so, pretty yeah, quick. Yeah. yeah. For an on location portrait, um, so if you can hear anything, a cat is licking the mic. Right? So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you've got you know you, like it's really quick, really. You, you know, you're in those. Ex in my opinion, I, I do believe they are extreme. You know, in mm. environments, and you know, you try and do a portrait of one person and then move on within like five ten minutes. It's pretty impressive. Right? And when you're there and you've spent a lot of money to be there purely to show off your skills of True. this is this is how good I can be True. in these situations 
there's a lot of pressure to be good and to actually do something that is. You know, Mum's going to love yeah. this. <laughs> but like, no, 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 look, it's a bit out of focus, but you have to understand. <laughs> I was at altitude and it was really cold. You have to, it doesn't yeah. matter, you have to get the shot. They don't care what those. It's true, yeah. You, you can't explain, yeah, and the, the internet will sort that yeah. out for you as yeah. well because you don't, they don't care about your explanation. Yeah, yeah but it was really hard. I don't care. Yes. Don't focus. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I see. Yeah. It, it being good is the, the price of entry, you know, Absolutely. the fact that you're under Absolutely. these conditions is then what makes it interesting, but it has to be good in the first place. Gotcha. Um, I, and I'm, I'm sure I'll be showing images as we're, you know, as we've been talking here as well, but these final images, you are looking to how long before they're up, how long before we can see them. I know you've got some BTS and that sort of thing yeah. on Instagram. and I've been putting stuff up on Instagram, Steve Brown Creative. <laughs> Uh, and I'm hoping to get stuff up on my website in the next few days. I've been plowing through all oh, these cool, pictures okay. that I've been okay. taking and then trying to work out how they fit together, how they fit into my existing work, you know, how I can integrate this new style, which Brilliant. isn't necessarily what I have been doing so much, okay. in with my previous style and not have it completely, you know, jarring. Um, so, yeah, so hopefully in the next few days I'll be able to cool. get this up on the site alongside my other work. And, well, this uh, video will be out in the next few days, so it gives you an incentive to come back. <laughs> yeah, <it's a> <laughs> Hopefully we can, link, we can link to it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, brilliant. Well, thank you very much indeed, I really appreciate your time. Uh, I know no it's been, uh, you know, it's you. been, it's gone on a little long this one, but it was certainly a huge amount I wanted to cover. So yeah, and I really, really appreciate it. Thanks to you. No, me too. That's great. Really no worries. Right.